Hey everyone, and welcome to another deep dive. This time we're taking a look at one of the most uh, colorful characters in Star Wars, um, Hondo Onaka. This weak way pirate captain has popped up everywhere, from the Clone Wars to the rise of the First Order. He's a smuggler, a schemer, sometimes a reluctant ally, and always looking out for number one. Definitely someone who knows how to survive. That's for sure. But was yep. he a straight up villain or just a survivor? trying to make his way in a chaotic galaxy. That's what we're here to figure out today. Sounds like a good plan. And we've got a lot to dig into. We'll be drawing on Hondo's autobiography, The Book of Hondo. Of course, with a character like Hondo, you always got to take his own stories with a grain of salt. Right. You never know how much is truth and how much is, well, Hondo embellishing his own legend. Exactly. Plus, we've got some other in-universe tales and some insights into how this character was created behind the scenes. So we'll be jumping around a bit in the timeline. But I think it'll help us get a complete picture of this guy. Okay, let's unpack this. To understand Hondo, I guess we need to start with his early life. Born on the weak gray homeworld, Schreeler. But here's the kicker. He was sold into slavery by his own parents as a child. Not exactly a warm and fuzzy upbringing. No kidding. I mean, can you imagine being betrayed by your own family like that? It's got to leave a mark. Oh, absolutely. And in Hondo's case, it seems like it shaped his whole outlook on life. His mother was a con artist. So instead of bedtime stories... Hondo was getting lessons in picking pockets and swindling people. Wow. Talk about tough love. I guess it explains why Hondo's always looking out for number one. He learned early on that you can't trust anyone, not even your own family. It's a harsh lesson. Yeah. But it definitely instilled in him this, well, this sense of self-reliance and cunning. He even managed to escape slavery by using a disguise. Mm. Talk about thinking on your feet. Yeah, that's Hondo adapting to the situation, finding a way out. And eventually he ends up on Bunta Planet run by the Huts. He becomes a cupbearer for Porla the Hut. You know, a cupbearer <laughs> for a hut. That doesn't exactly scream future pirate king. Right. It sounds kind of, well, humble for someone with Hondo's ambitions. It might seem that way. But this mentorship under a hut is actually a recurring theme in Star Wars. Think Han Solo learning the smuggling trade under Jabba. These ambitious, morally flexible characters... They pick up a lot working for these crime lords. So Hondo's learning the ropes, observing how the underworld operates. But of course, this is Hondo we're talking about. He wouldn't be content staying in the shadows forever. Oh no, definitely not. Eventually, he betrays Porla, forms his own pirate gang, and takes over this ship called the Akushnet. The Akushnet sounds like a pretty sweet ride. I bet Hondo put his own unique spin on it. You know, it. he sets up a base on the lawless planet of Florum. It's remote, full of resources hard to police. Basically, the perfect pirate haven. Kind of like Tortuga back in the golden age of piracy. Mm -hmm. Strategically advantageous. The perfect hideout for a pirate king. And then comes the Clone Wars. The galaxy erupts into chaos. You'd think a pirate would want to lay low during a war. But not Hondo. He sees opportunity everywhere. And boy does he seize it. One of his most audacious moves is capturing Count Dooku. A leader of the Separatists, Hondo manages to outsmart a Sith Lord Talk about guts. Seriously, the sheer audacity of that move, it's almost comical. And then you have Jedi Kenobi and Skywalker showing up to negotiate Dooku's release. Mm. I can just imagine Hondo's delight. Two Jedi walking right into his trap. It's like a banquet being served to him. And of course, things don't exactly go as planned. I bet Hondo had a few tricks up his sleeve. Oh, absolutely. There's a chaotic ransom exchange, double-crossing pirates, Jar Jar Binks accidentally becoming a hero. And in the end, Dooku escapes. It's pure chaos, and Hondo is right in the middle of it all, probably enjoying every minute. It sounds like a typical day at the office for Captain Onaka. You could say that, and this kind of interaction, this sort of chaotic dance, seems to be his pattern with the Jedi. He causes trouble. Yeah. Then somehow he ends up helping them, although usually for a price. Exactly. Like that time he delivered rocket launchers to rebels on Onderon at the Jedi's request. Uh -huh. Always the mercenary, that one. Always looking for an angle. But sometimes his self-interest aligns with the good guys, right? It makes him such a kind plucking character, hard to pin down. Absolutely. He's playing all sides, always looking for an advantage. But he's not entirely heartless. There are glimmers of something else in there, something that makes you question whether he's all bad. So Hondo's thriving during the Clone Wars, but as we all know, the good times don't last forever. The Republic falls, the Empire rises, and even a pirate king like Hondo is going to feel the squeeze, right? Oh, yeah. The Separatists dismantle his gang. The Empire disrupts their operations. Even someone as cunning as Hondo is vulnerable to the changing tides of the galaxy. It just goes to show no one is truly untouchable, not even a pirate king. He's forced to adapt, become more of a lone wolf, 
operating on a smaller scale, it's a different kind of challenge for Hondo. And yet he never gives up. There's that story about him trying to capture Kira, a high-ranking member of Crimson Dawn. That didn't exactly go as planned. But it shows Hondo's always got a scheme brewing. Always thinking. Always looking for an opportunity. And this period is interesting because it highlights how the galaxy is changing. Hondo's got to evolve, become more cautious, take on riskier ventures to survive. From Pirate King to something a little more, well, desperate. Yeah. It's a fascinating shift for his character. And those ventures lead him to some interesting partnerships, right? Like teaming up with the bounty hunter IG-88. Talk about a dangerous pair. I can't even imagine what those two got up to. It's a far cry from the grand schemes of the Onaka gang. Now it's about survival. Hustling to stay afloat in this new, more oppressive galaxy. So we've seen Hondo go from slave to pirate king. Now he's navigating this dangerous world of the Empire. What's next for this unpredictable character? We'll find out in part two of your deep dive on Hondo Annika. So the Empire's getting a foothold, right? The galaxy's changing. And mm. Hondo, he's not one to just sit back and watch. He's got to be in the middle of it all, stirring things up. Always. And that leads him to some run-ins with this new generation of rebels, this group called the Spectres, fighting against the Empire, doing their thing. The Spectres, yeah, they're uh, they're an interesting bunch. And Hondo, I can't imagine him joining a rebellion wholeheartedly. No, not exactly the follow orders type. Yeah. But he forms this sort of partnership with them, more like a mutually beneficial arrangement. He sees a way to profit. They need his expertise. Hondo sees an angle, as always. But it's the dynamic with Ezra Bridger that really stands out, as was this young Jedi in training, right? Right. Idealistic, sees the good in everyone, even a pirate like Hondo. And Hondo, I bet he plays that up, milks that for all it's worth. Oh, yeah. He loves to play the charming rogue. Ezra's kind of, well, he's a little starstruck. He sees Hondo as this almost like a space pirate version of Robin Hood. Ezra's got that hero worship thing going on, and Hondo, he's probably loving every minute of it. Absolutely. Yeah. But it's more than just hero worship, though. It's this clash of ideals. Really, Ezra, with his idealism, believing in the good fight. Mm -hmm. And Hondo, well, Hondo's all about pragmatism. What's in it for him? It's a fascinating dynamic to watch, these two clashing personalities, and yet they work together somehow. They do. Mm -hmm. And sometimes Hondo actually helps the rebels. I mean, yeah. it genuinely helps, even if it benefits him, too. It's those moments that make you wonder, is there a heart of gold under all that bluster? It's hard to tell with Hondo. He's always got an angle. But there's that heist at Reclam Station. Hondo leads the rebels to steal Yai-Wing fighters from the Empire. <laughs> Bold move, even for him. So Hondo gets a new ship. The rebels get firepower. Everybody wins. At least in Hondo's eyes. It's a win-win in his book. Yeah. But as Hondo gets older, you see him trying to go legit, even starts a company. Onaka Transport Solutions. Can you believe it? Onaka Transport Solutions has a nice ring to it. Sounds very official. But can a pirate really go straight? I guess that's the question. It makes you wonder about those real-life criminals, right? Trying to turn over a new leaf. Oh. Uh, habits die hard, though. And Hondo, he's got a lot of habits. That he does. And then there's that story, the heist on the Halcyon Star Cruiser. Remember that one? Hondo, Lando Carishan, and Maz Kanata talk about a legendary team up. Right, legends. And they pull off this elaborate heist. But here's the thing there's always a thing with Hondo. Oh, yeah. Hondo nearly dies for this box of treasures in Kanata. She just tosses it aside. What? She just throws it away after all that. Yep. Turns out the box itself was the real prize some priceless artifact. The treasures inside meant nothing to her. Hondo risked his neck for nothing. Oh, that's classic Hondo. Always going for the obvious score, missing the bigger picture. It really makes you question his priorities sometimes. But it also makes you wonder about his moral compass. He goes up against the Black Sun Brutal Criminal Syndicate. Right, and he helps the rebellion discreetly, of course, while running his legitimate business. So maybe he's not all bad. It's like he's trying to find a balance between his self-serving nature and maybe not a conscience, but a sense of doing the right thing. Sometimes. Hondo with a conscience. It's almost too much to handle. Wouldn't be Hondo without some contradictions, would it? True enough. But even as he tries to go straight, he can't resist getting involved in galactic events. He shows up on Batuu during the First Order Resistance War, offers his services, and the Millennium Falcon to Chewbacca. The guy's a magnet for trouble. It's in his nature. So he's evolved from ruthless pirate king to slightly less ruthless, sometimes helpful, always scheming outlaw. It's quite a journey. It is. And the question remains, is he a villain, a survivor, or something in between? 
that's the big question, right? And I think to answer it, we need to look at the bigger picture. What does Hondo's story tell us about the Star Wars galaxy itself? That's what we'll explore in part three, where we'll uncover some deeper insights and leave you with something to think about. Okay, so we've gone through a lot. Betrayals, heists, team-ups, double crosses. Hondo's story is, well, it's a wild ride. Definitely keeps you on your toes. That's for sure. But after all that, the question still remains, is this guy a villain? Or is he just doing what he needs to do to survive? It's the big question, right? And I think to really answer that, we need to zoom out a bit, look beyond Hondo himself. Look at the bigger picture. Exactly. Because Hondo's not just this one-off character. He reflects something. Something about the Star Wars galaxy itself. You mean like how it's not all black and white, good guys versus bad guys. Exactly. It's full of shades of gray. And Hondo, he embodies that. He's not a classic Oof. hero. He's definitely not a pure villain. He's Hondo. He's Hondo. Yeah. And that's what makes him so interesting. He's driven by self-interest, sure, but he's also capable of surprising acts of, well, maybe not goodness, but something close to it. Flexible morality. Yeah. That's a good way to put it. He's a master manipulator, a pragmatist, yeah. always looking out for number one. But then there are those moments, like helping the rebels or going up against the black sun. Those moments make you wonder, is there a heart under all that bluster? It's what keeps us guessing, right? And that's why I think he's such a popular character. He brings this sense of humor, unpredictability to the galaxy. He reminds us that not everyone fits into a neat little box. Exactly. And I mean, who else could capture a Sith Lord? then team up with Jedi to steal from the Empire. It's like Hondo operates on a whole other level. He's a walking, talking embodiment of chaos. He is, but somehow it works for him. He always lands on his feet. He's a survivor, that's for sure. He adapts, he sees opportunities, and he never gives up, even when the odds are stacked against him. It's that never-say-die spirit, mm -hmm. even if it involves a few double crosses along the way. So after this deep dive into Hondo Onaka, I think it's safe to say he's not easy to define. Nope. He's a pirate, a scoundrel, a businessman, and sometimes even a reluctant hero, all rolled into one. A reflection of the galaxy itself, full of light and shadow, self-interest, and unexpected moments of compassion. Exactly. He's a reminder that the most compelling stories are often about the characters who blur the lines. And that's what makes Hondo Onaka so fascinating. So, here's a thought for you. If you had the chance to meet Hondo, would you trust him? Think about everything we've discussed, mm -hmm. all the twists and turns, what stands out to you, what have you learned about his character, his motivations. How would you approach someone like Hondo? Would you see an opportunity, a threat, or maybe a little bit of both? It's something to think about. Because in a galaxy full of heroes and villains, it's often the characters like Hondo, the ones who walk that line, who leave the biggest impression. And that's a wrap on our deep dive into Hondo Onaka. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.